Okay, can everyone see my screen? They should see a slide that says Wilmington. I can see it. Uh, okay, Abhishek says okay. yes. Okay, great. So thank you everyone for coming. Um, like Monique said, this is our first event for Wilmington and it's gonna be our first virtual event. So thank you for helping us to make history today. A little uh, fun thing about Wilmington, Delaware, it's on the East Coast and it's in Delaware, which is known for being the first state. And it's a very, very small city. So you pass through it on a highway in like five minutes. So that's a little fun fact about Wilmington, Delaware. There's also a Wilmington, North Carolina, but not to be confused with Delaware. They also call Delaware the pass-through state, but <laughs> that's enough of my jokes. Today, we're gonna to talk about how to prepare for certifications. So just a little agenda here. So we're gonna have introductions. We'll talk about upcoming MuleSoft news. Um, I'll be giving the certifications talk and then we'll open it up for you guys to give us feedback, ask questions, and also if you've passed certification exams to give your own tips. So a little bit about me. My name is Whitney Akiola. I'm previously known as Whitney Ford. I'm recently married. So if you see anything that says Whitney Ford, same person. I'm certified in um, MuleSoft certified platform and MuleSoft certified integration architect level one. Also, I have my MuleSoft certified developer level one for Mule 4. I was previously certified in Mule 3, but I chose not to renew it because most of the clients that I'm working with are focused on Mule 4 at this point. I've been a software engineer full time since 2012, and I've been dealing with MuleSoft on, and doing Mule integrations since 2016. Um, a fun fact for me was I learned MuleSoft and I started um, in 2016 off the MuleSoft U courses. <laughs> and then right after that, I got my certification and I kept learning, um, teaching myself more and more through the MuleSoft Champions program. So I don't know how long um, you guys have been doing Mule, but there used to be a program called Mule Soft Champions. Um, at that time, there weren't as many meetups and you would do challenges that way. So that's how I really started to learn and get a passion for Mule Soft. And now, um, Monique, would you mind introducing yourself? Uh, yeah, so, my name is Manik Magar. I am a uh, technology architect at Avio Consulting. We are based out of US, uh, Dallas, Texas, headquartered there, but we are a niche shop for um, MuleSoft related integration, right? And I am also MuleSoft ambassador. Um, I host, I also organize MuleSoft um, online meetup, uh, meetup group. You might have seen it uh, in there. And I'm integration architect level one certified API design uh, certified uh, been in this industry for almost like 14 years now. So not that I am so much aged, but I'm still <laughs> a little old. Um, uh, yeah, other than that, I think I have been um, actively uh, participating in MuleSoft community via blogs, meetups or forums like I love to contribute back, so I'm always there, and I do publish my blogs at javastreets.com. So feel free to visit and do it. But uh, I mean that that's pretty much about me, Whitney. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. So now we want to know a little bit about you. So mention in the chat your name, if you're experienced with MuleSoft or new, um, and what you would like to see from meetups and um, after COVID, a place you'd like to visit. Um, so I'll take a little time so we can read the chat. Yeah. 
Let me see. Uh, like... Okay, first meet up. Great. And we have some some ones that's new to me also. Hey, Marathi. So for I, I think even for those who are new, it will this one will be helpful to get directions of how to progress um, to get certified, right? Right. Hey, Santosh. Yeah. Okay. V core related discussions, best practices around capacity planning. Okay. That's nice. Experience three years of your active in your forum, write blogs, we'll visit all places. Oh, that's nice. MCIA, we are preparing for that. Good luck. Yes. Best wishes. Yep. Okay, so should I start? Or okay, should we? Okay. Okay, so thank you for that. Just upcoming, um, there will be a MuleSoft Connect now. And this is going to be pretty unique because it's going to um, be focused in meetups. So each technical talk will be a meetup. And for the Americas, it's going to be on October 30, 13, 2020 at 9 Pacific Standard Time. So you can check that out. Um, but again, it's going to be October 13th. Now, if you don't live in Americas, there are um, options based off of your region. But this is something to check out. I know there's going to be a couple of talks by some of the MuleSoft ambassadors um, that you can check out. So now this whole meetup is regarding certifications, but what's the benefits of them? Well, this is what MuleSoft says. It's a way to demonstrate your proficiency, stand out in the market, and share your success. But how has it benefited me personally? Because I wanna touch you guys and tell you how great it is to get certified, how has it benefited me personally? Well, the first thing, it gave me the ability to move into the integration space. When I first started MuleSoft, I had no experience in integration at all. And in fact, the reason I started MuleSoft was because I wanted to get out of, um, I wanted to get out of a current position that I was in. And I heard that MuleSoft was this hot technology at the company and everybody wanted to get into it. So I, I found out they were doing free training. At that time it was called MuleSoft U and it was a free fundamentals training. So I took it. It was self-paced um, on Mule 3. It had videos and it allowed me to follow along. So after shortly after that, like I had mentioned before, I started the MuleSoft Champions program and I started preparing and I got certified. So I didn't have the on the job training, but getting the MuleSoft certification helped me to move into that space. So that is an option for those that have don't have the on the job training starting out. It also gave me a way to validate my skills and it boosted my confidence. So not only did I believe that I knew what I was talking about, but MuleSoft was able to validate that. Another way for me to, and this was really important for me, it allowed me to achieve my performance and personal goals. 
So one of the things that I would do and I would recommend um, if you could too, is when you when you're up for certify, you want to get a certification, write it into your goals. And I know sometimes this can be bold, but this will allow you to actually motivate you to achieve this goal. And if you achieve it, then you have a reason to go to your company and say, look, I'm moving in a um I'm moving in a way that I should be promoted for the next level. Now, easier said than done, but at least this gives you something with weight to check off. Also, when you're um, leaving a company and going to another company, the certification helps with salary negotiations. So certain um, with that, you might be able to get use that as leverage. Uh, for a salary increase in your salary negotiations. But th that's just food for thought. Another thing is if you're a contractor or you work for a consultant firm, a lot of companies or when they're bidding for a job, a lot of, of the clients, they want to know how many certified developers do you have. And this is a good um, indication for your company. Another thing on your level is when you're looking to book your next job and you're competing against someone else, does the person you're competing against have the certification or are they just going off of their mule experience? The certification is, it definitely carries a lot of value um, here. Other things, um, LinkedIn, Twitter, your blog site, uh, MuleSoft is very good about giving you um, your online certificates as well as badges to put on your social media like LinkedIn, and it will make you noticeable to recruiters. So the certifications has definitely changed my life. It's helped me to um, open doors. And it's helped me to get into the integration space, which I'm very, very, um, very happy with and passionate about. So Monique said that we were gonna do trivia. So this is the first trivia question. Now, Monique, if you can, um, if you can coordinate this, that would be great. Okay. So the question is, what MuleSoft API-led connectivity layer is intended to expose part of a back-end database without business logic? A, experience, B, data, C, system, D, process, or E, security? And I think people already answered that. And I think Amprasad, on it first as system that is right. So system layer is where you don't add any business logic. That, it's pure data. Yeah, quite. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Okay, cool. You guys are fast before I can even. Yeah, that's that's. I I I think I, I missed to um, ask you probably separate out like a question on first slide and answers on second slide. So we just show the question first, let them read it and then put it. Otherwise people are, I mean, both ways are fine. So yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. I'm, I'm just gonna take a note of um, um, this first one. And so for, for the next one, guys, I think um, let's do this thing. Uh, when you show the trivia question, it is going to be same on the choice and the uh, question on the same slide, right? So yeah. Pl please, please wait for answering it until either Whitney says go ahead and answer or I say go ahead and answer. So we give everybody an equal clue of when to start the answering. Okay. Okay. So, sounds good. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, please. Okay, so how do we prepare for 
the MuleSoft certification exams. Before I start, I must say that I didn't pass every last certification exam. And in fact, in 2016, my very first certification exam, I failed. And then the next, the next uh, retry, I passed it. And then when I had to get recertified in 2019, I've passed every last one that I've tried on the first time. But um, I found that I needed a strategy to take these exams. And here's some tips that I came up with that I think can help you. And um, you can choose if you want which ones apply to you. But I just wanted to develop these tips because I was getting a lot um, from my friends, from my peers. How, how did you pass this? Did you have any, um, do you have any notes and things like that? So I wanted to share this with everybody. So the first tip is to take the necessary training. Monique, I think there's some extra disturbance. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Okay, no problem. So the first tip, the first tip is take the necessary training. You're not going to just start um, and take the exam immediately without the training, right? So based on your budget, take the necessary training. And from this screen, um, from this slide, you can see that this is from the training site on MuleSoft, and they have uh, some self-paced, instructor-led, and um, private training. So the self-paced training is free. It was previously called MuleSoft U. Now, two courses, if you're starting and you want to be a certified Mule 4 developer, are the AnyPoint Platform Developmental Fundamentals class and the AnyPoint Platform Development uh, Mule 4 for Mule 3 users. The difference between the two is the Mule 4 for Mule 3 users. Um, that person that's taking that one already has Mule 3 experience. So, and, and that exam, that class will help you if you have Mule 3 experience and you're certified, you're a certified integration associate, which is the Mule 3 um, certification. You can, it will prepare you for a Delta exam that you can take. So again, that Delta exam is you're already certified, your Mule 3 certification is still valid and you wanna get certified in Mule 4. Now, the fundamentals class is for ones that do not know anything about MuleSoft and they're trying to learn more, but they also want to be able to develop. So it's going to give you an overview of MuleSoft, of any point platform, and it's also going to show you how to develop in Mule. Now, Again, this is like based off your budget. So at the bare minimum, you everybody can take the fundamentals and learn how to create mule applications. Another form of training, Salesforce released some trails on Trailhead. Um, I personally have not looked at these trails, but they're there and I think they're a good entry point for ones that are still um, trying to break into MuleSoft. Also, the MuleSoft forum and the help site. Some of you might be familiar with this, but there's a bunch of different things. There's um, you can use this for support. You can also use this for forums and group discussions. So this is at help.mulesoft.com, I believe. The next one, um, and you guys might um, have checked out check these out are blog sites. One of the things about MuleSoft is we have a wonderful community here where people really contribute. So some blogs that I've come across were the prosdev.com blog, also the journey.io blog, and javastreets.com, which is Monique's blog. I had to feature him here. But 
check these out because they go into detail things like uh, data weave. They might also go into detail and show you how to uh, solve certain errors or common errors or common mistakes. Um, and I definitely recommend checking blogs out. The next um, way or resource uh, are YouTube. YouTube is phenomenal for finding out how to do things um, do mule type work. So towards the left, there's the mule soft videos. I don't know if you guys got a chance to check this out, but mule soft offers um, YouTube videos under their own YouTube uh, channel. And again, it's called mule, mule soft videos. They recently put together a mule soft training and mule soft tutorials where um, I believe the MuleSoft training has um, small videos from two to five minutes that explain certain concepts. Some of my favorite ones are Cloud Hub architecture or streaming um, or the ones on streaming where it, it goes hand in hand with the documentation. Also, I want to mention virtual muleys. This is the group that Monique uh, helps to, to run for the online English meetups. So this is um, very useful. And if you can't attend some of the online meetups on Wednesdays at noon, they also have a recorded version of it so that you can look at it in your spare time. Um, some of my favorite ones are Graph, um, I want to, I might say this wrong, GraphQL. I love that one. That is my favorite one. There's also one on Mule um, M Unit Recorder. Uh, just very different things where you can check that out and get a little bit more um, a little bit more knowledge on things that may not be in the MuleSoft documentation. So the next tip is you're going to set your exam date and you're not you're going to do more than just write it on the calendar you're actually going to pay for it in advance why because no one wants to lose money <laughs> you want to pay for um you want to pay for this exam now it's not a hard date MuleSoft does give you the flexibility of moving uh forward or moving your exam date but at least this gets you motivated because you don't want to lose your money there's two ways to pay you can pay for cat through cash or flexible training credits. Usually, MuleSoft offers flexible training credits and vouchers, but I'll talk about flexible training credits. MuleSoft offers flexible training credits to companies. So when um, companies are doing maybe like their licensing and purchasing of vCores and, and um, other products, MuleSoft will do a deal with them and possibly provide flexible training credits. Now, I can't say that they always do this, but I've seen this in my past work where they'll offer flexible training credits so that your company or, or employees or developers can get trained um, through MuleSoft. So let's say you bought two prod cores and MuleSoft offered four training credits for you to take um, you, your class. So you can either take a class or you can pay for your exam. So when you go to sign up for your exam, you should see an option that says cash, how much it costs in cash, and how much it costs in flexible training credits. Okay. The next tip is you want to practice. You guys may have heard it practice makes perfect. It's true. So there's three options that I came up with. The first option is to do the practice problems. If you're studying for the MuleSoft developer exam, there's DIY exercises along with the course material, separate DIY exercises. Do them. It's going to really help you, especially if you're trying to get into MuleSoft, you have no on the job experience. This is your first step. 
Now, if you have on the job training, then that's great. You definitely, you're doing option two if you already have on the job training. But the best of both worlds, or the best combination is both option three. MuleSoft recommends that you have at least six months training, or at least when I first started, they recommended that you had six months training, uh, on the job training, sorry, you have six months on the job training along with doing the exercises and program, um, the, the exercises and practice problems. Now, again, we understand that some people are trying to break into MuleSoft and don't have it. So that's why you can fall back at option one. But if you don't have that on a job training, that's when you're really going to look at those resources that I shared with you in tip one, the blog sites, um, the train, the MuleSoft training, different things like that. The next tip is to read the documentation. I'm going to repeat this. Read the documentation. Make this your habit. When you're working on something new, you I find myself frequently reading the documentation. This is going to help you. Um, and then there's a strategy to reading the documentation. So when you're preparing for your exam, you're going to get a data sheet. And that's a list of everything that's on that exam. And go through that data sheet and read up on the documentation to that data sheet. And now I'll get into tip five. This is study breadth and then depth. So you're going to cover all the testable content first recorded on that data sheet. So towards the right of this slide, this is an example of a data sheet for the fundamentals course. So you'll see everything on the left is your topic and your bullet points, and those will be covered an exam, but on your right are a list of resources. Those resources, um, if you're taking the class, you'll have class modules. Um, if you, and then there's also other supplemental um, links that you can click on and get more information. Now, if you can't afford to take the class or for whatever reason you decided you're not going to take the class, then you definitely, you cannot really use those resources unless you find like a supplemental link with resources. So you will have to look on the right hand side. Now, we all want to know deep things. However, like I said, you're going to cover all the testable content from a breadth perspective. Make sure you have a basic understanding and then where you need to know more, then you'll cover the deeper things. So an example of that could be you, you want to do um, the art, one of the architect exams and there's a lot of concepts about AWS. Well, or there's a lot of concepts about Cloud Hub architecture, making sure you want a better understanding of it well, you can research AWS concepts. You can learn about different things that back Cloud Hub from AWS. Another thing is you want to, you're working on another exam and they're talking about domain-driven um, design, but you're not really familiar with that. You can go and look up additional resources to help you to understand what domain-driven design is. So. Always go breath to make sure you have a basic understanding and then go deeper because that deeper understanding is going to help you if time permits. Second trivia question. Okay, Monique, I'm going to have you take it away here. What answers? Uh, okay. That's fine. Easy the answers already. What is the best approach for getting more practice? And let's see. Got it this time. Are you sure? A uh, no. I think the first one correct is Venkat. E, uh, like Whitney was saying, yes for both options. Practice problems DIY. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna repeat the question. 
uh, for Sridhar. He is on the phone. So the question is, what is the best approach for getting more practice? What options where practice problems, DIY exercises, or uh, second, on the job training, third, Udemy courses, fourth, Quizlets, and the last one, A and B, which is like practice problems and the job training. So the right answer is E. You do want to have um, on the job training for sure, but like she was saying, for some people it may not be possible because they are just entering. So DIY exercise is also a good option because you then get to see a lot of different integration challenges and go for it. So e, A and B would be the best of both worlds, and that would be the answer. So that one, Venkat is the first one to answer that. Uh, Venkat, if you could send me your email address on the direct message or chat that would be helpful thank you thanks for me you can proceed okay so that's great i do want to mention can you guys hear me yes oh, okay thank you Okay, so I do want to mention that Udemy courses and Quizlets, they are available, but those courses are put on by other, um, other people that know um, something about MuleSoft. So I'm not saying that th these are not good, um, but you're the best, as um, Monique said, will be A and B um, for you. Okay, I'll go, I'll go on. The, the next tip is study diagrams. This is especially true if you're going for the architect search. How do architects speak? <laughs> How do they communicate with one another? Well, let's do a diagram. So make sure that you understand the diagrams. This is the Cloud Hub architecture diagram, but you definitely wanna, wanna study that. The next tip is take the practice exam. So there's quizzes and at the end of the coursework, there's a practice exam, which is normally a combination of, but it might have changed since they've revamped. So, but it's normally a combination of all the quizzes to make this final exam for your practice take it and take it and reread and rework on anything that is a problem area. So for instance, if you're struggling with um, the MuleSoft developer exam for error handling, then you're gonna keep taking it, keep taking it till you can ace the error handling until you can explain it to yourself. I recommend um, you get at least a 90% on your certification um, practice exam. You need about a 70% to pass. So you get a 90% means that, okay, well, you ace the, the practice exam. Your chances are higher of you passing the, um, the actual exam. And the good news is you already set that date, but you can keep, you can move that date. You have up to a certain time period where you can adjust your date um, that you had already set. And one thing that works for me is to come into the exam and feel confident. I'm not, um, I don't really work as, an, oh, I'm gonna go to the exam and I'm gonna just see what's on the exam and see how I do, and that's fine. Some people work that way, but for me, I wanna be as confident as possible. So definitely, I would say take the exam when you're confident, when you've aced the exam, and you, um, you know, and just enjoy it. So here's a tip recap, seven tips to help you prepare for the exam. First 
is you're going to take the necessary training. Second, you're going to set your exam date. Remember, you're going to do more than just write it on paper. You're going to actually pick. Three, you're going to practice. Four, you're going to read the MuleSoft documentation. Five, you're going to study breadth, then depth. Six, you're going to study diagrams. And seven, you're going to take the practice exam. Okay. So during the exam, I had to add these. You're going to stay calm and you're going to just take the exam. So relax, pace yourself, thoroughly read each question, especially if you're taking an architect exam. A lot of it is word problems. So you need to make sure that you're not panicking and that you're just carefully reading through. The next tip is have fun. Like this is your craft. This, you know, have fun, treat it like a game, a puzzle, and, you know, just give it your best shot. MuleSoft does offer retakes, but you should be enjoying it. And last trivia question. Okay. You're going to name three out of the seven exam preparation tips presented through, during this presentation. And this is, is excluding staying calm during the exam and having fun. Please, yeah, please, please put it in one line so it's easy to see who gives first answer right with all three. I'll leave that to you. Please scan through the answers and see which one is the one. Okay, let me do that. Okay, are we starting from same in line, in same line, please? Yes, do, do you see um, three tips in one line, meaning in the same answer? <laughs> Otherwise it gets difficult, right? To If they are not in the same answer, it gets difficult to see. In the, yeah, So. okay. See who okay, so I think first. we can stop now and then I can, um, we can keep going. <laughs> just, just find and the first I person can... who gave three uh, correct tips. <laughs> Give new question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let's see. So do you need problems, practice? Practice, study, training. Set your exam, practice problems. Practice, study, take practice. I think it's uh, Tashim. Uh, I think praise is supposed to be practice. Uh, but it's not practice. It's not written as practice, so that's true. <laughs> It's because it, it gets into okay. Uh, it it should be as accurate as, or at least the full words. Okay.
praise him to take the practice exam or something. Due to fat fingers. <laughs> uh, yeah, to, okay, I think we can come back and announce the winner for this one because we have other things. I could just search you, it while do you you're have, doing your tip. Do you have? Okay. Um, scan through it and uh, see it. I think there are so many words and so many things. So <laughs> make sure <laughs> you have the right one in there. Okay. So while okay. while she reads through it and um, gets the first Your one. Yes. Yes. Uh, I mean, there is nothing different uh, from being an ambassador or a different thing. It just it's just based on what we have seen so far in the community while working with so many community members, what I have seen and what I have seen working for everyone, right? Like integration, integration is very big. There is no age to it. And you, you can work on the job, you can work on the <clears throat> read through the books, but you may not face everything that is out there for integration. So the best way what I have seen working, at least for me and for other people, is go on the Mewsort forum, go on the Slack, Slack or Flow, whichever one works for you. Go there, look at the questions, because questions will tell you more integration challenges. <clears throat> excuse me, that other people are facing, right? Like when you go on the forum, you read a question, oh, that's something new, I never thought about it. You don't, you not necessarily need to answer that it there, but if it interests you, you can go offline, figure out the solution. So while figuring out that solution, you are going to learn more about it. It's very generic thing. It doesn't have to be for MuleSoft. It can be anything, right? And the second one, like I was saying, MuleSoft forum, that is my favorite place to go and look around, find different problems. Data VV is the most interesting part because you find so many different examples of what data formats could be and what people want as an output. And you can really pick the example from there and spend hours in playing around that. And by the time you come back, you will probably find 10 different ways to do that same problem and solve it in 10 different ways. So it helps you to get more knowledge around it, right? And the last one, what you have seen there, blogging, some people on the chat said they do write blogs. Writing writing, any, uh, writing your articles blog is always a good idea in general because when you are just telling it to yourself, you say, ah, that's fine, I'll just read through it. But when you have to tell it to others, it's usual human tendency to get a little skeptical or the panic but oh, Am I right? Let me just double check. So you will de deep dive into your books, your topics and everything, which means you will learn it yourself and then you will write it. So that is definitely a very good another option that I consider to learn more about it, right? Uh, one more, uh, one more I, I got, I remembered while Whitney was talking about exam and the practice uh, part of it, I remember in, when I gave my first MCI exam, uh, not the integration architect, but the integrations MCID, I think it used to be uh, for the Mule 3. It was in Connect, uh, San, San Francisco Connect. I failed it by 0. 0.5. Like I scored 79.5 and uh, it was like a 80% 80 per, 80 you had you need to get it, right? So I, I failed it by 0. 0.5 and then I realized, so. It was connect. I was so much. I was so much excited about the event that is happening outside of the exam hall. I didn't pay much attention to review my answers again. So like, oh yeah, answered. I got all that. So done. That was a mistake. Once you answered your question, and if you have time, there is no rush to get out of the hall. Just go back and review your answers. I am sure out of like those questions, you will find a few corrections. Oh, I didn't read it through well through it. So let me just correct it. If you have time, please go back and review your answers while answering. If you feel that it's not 100%, always flag. There is a way to flag the question. Flag the question, you can go back and rethink about it. Especially for the architect exam, the questions like Whitney was saying, questions are gonna be tricky. They are descriptive. 
you have to read through it and you have to understand the meaning understand that diagram before you recommend your suggestion right your answer for some questions they are so tricky there is no right and wrong answer it's like what is your best understanding of this and what works best for you so some some question answers for architect exam are around that there is no right and wrong it is just how you interpret things and how you describe those things right so those are pretty much is whitney already covered a lot of good tips so probably i won't add uh, the same things there uh, for the question that abhishek is what all things i did uh, to be an ambassador uh it was not the intention to be an ambassador <laughs> so uh, it just i just got uh, picked up for that and i i was actually one of the first four ambassadors uh, when the program was um, created uh, and it was it is all based on the work that you do for community the work that the time that you spend to help others so there is no a uh, fixed criteria like it's not like an exam or it's not like a job description or anything that you have to check these 10 boxes and you are do it it it's it's based on your contribution to the musoft community to the um, uh, not just musoft community whole developer community right so writing blogs i think if 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 you ask me what really i was doing before i was uh, i got to be an ambassador i was very active on the forum even right now if you go i am on the leaderboard uh, first top 10 contributors to the forum i used to write lot of articles i still write it um i speak at the event so what i'm saying is that this is you don't need to like an aim for it 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 will all come to you when you really deserve it and if you really think that you are one of that um like an you can say you you are doing lot of good things about the ambassador exactly like am prasad said it's a by product of your efforts like i was saying when i was doing all these there was no ambassador program so there was no even no even not even an intention it came to us as a surprise oh you four are ambassador because you did all these things but now, wasn't it like champions oh <laughs> uh, yeah before you are right yeah. so before ambassador it was mules of champions uh, before the forum there was a mules of champions thing again you do lot of activities there you get the points you get the rewards and all that right that eventually got um promoted into the ambassador program if if and it's an open program like it's not it's not something very close right so there is a site ambassadors.mulesoft.com i guess that's the site and if you go there you will see all current ambassador plus if you think you know someone who is really kind of like an ambassador person and he should be an ambassador there is a way you can recommend uh, you can suggest uh, ambassador team oh i think this person is really good he has done all these things it's like an democracy right if you think he is good just nominate them and there isn't then whatever the community thinks they will do it and who knows everybody will get a fair chance in there uh do we need a tag mulesoft to our blogs or our contribution to mulesoft will recognize us that's natural by social media platform whatever you write if you write about mulesoft you will tag mulesoft if you write about um, tesla you will tag tesla right it, it it's common so whatever you write about and um, the community team is very helpful so if you write something about mule or anything and drop it on the linkedin or twitter the community that we have around mule soft are very nice and good folks so they do help sharing your um, articles and everything so just just be true to yourself what you are writing so one of the thing uh, for blog writing i i i say sometime is there are lot of blogs out there everyone is writing something personally i feel if you are writing just don't be part of the noise right write something which you think will really add a value to something like for example you solved a problem which was a very tricky problem and you did like lot of things researched tricky thing it's not a common 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 sense thing something like that 
just go and write about it like think what value you are going to add when you are going to write any article why should you read like when i when i write an article and it's like a long one and it takes 30 minutes to read it the first question is why should somebody spend 30 minutes of their time to read my article right will i spend my 30 minutes on this content and if the answer is no i'll write it and i'll just keep it to myself as a notes right like this is something i did but if it is something that is um, more useful it can just go out to everyone oh yeah and now uh, i think uh, we can make anyone presenter if anybody wants to participate and talk just feel free to drop on the chat and we can enable uh, so let me yeah i've enabled like yeah. a little less than half a third yeah you can just make them presenter uh, presenter mode on for them and if they want to join as in a speaker mode they can join in oh okay it's not it's not host it's presenter no, presenter host is a little more uh, okay. rights on there right uh, feel free to talk um, to prasad and everyone whoever gotten option they can turn it on and want to speak feel free to speak uh, let me see what other question monica how do you remember or keep the knowledge which you have gained over years i tend to forget that's exactly what whitney was mentioning practice keep practicing keep doing the stuff again and again it's there's nothing wrong in forgetting stuff you should you are supposed to forget old stuff otherwise you won't get the new stuff but whatever you think you need to retain you need to keep go back and uh, practice on it so other way i would say is everybody has a github right like just go back to your github and look at your github repositories think how many repositories you have in there are they good enough for you and just think over it uh, you can compare those repositories with other fellow developers and see what they are doing you will find there are so many people who create repositories write code there not to share with anyone just to keep practicing you find something you find an integration for example twitter integration you want to see how to integrate with twitter just create a project integrate with twitter push it to the github find the next one so the idea is keep keep practicing it keep stay in touch with that one it is same as what you will do for people if you don't stay in touch you will forget the people right so just keep practicing for uh, for your stuff keep writing integrations in there and that's how basically i do it like i keep uh, you will always for example i love data view so you will always find a data view playground open in my browser tab throughout the day <laughs> so whatever you find here and there you will just go and try try them there uh whitney i think that question is uh, probably you can answer where do we find the practice exam yeah so the practice exam i believe actually i let me share my screen let's go find the practice exam <laughs> sure can you guys see my screen i was on mute yes so I remember the practice exams used to be before they used to be on um, under the course. Yeah. But actually, Phil, do you know, because you just recently took the practice exam. I'm sorry, I don't remember now that these sites are, the site has been changed. Mm, I think it's there. Yeah. He's saying it's at the very end of the MCD self-based training. So it's at the very end of the training. 
Okay, so it's still inside the training, right? But at the very end. I think there's another link to it. I have to find it. Practice exam. To the fundamental scores and it's the very last module so keep scrolling to the down bottom there are modules at the bottom right yeah that one part one two, okay three. processing records in there they revive revamp the whole site yeah oh you may have to be in the, in the in the once you start the course then probably you will see it yeah, yeah. that's in there and to Tassin's question uh, about the training materials i gave my mcid last year and the uh, the slides that i used through the throughout my working I still go back and look at them because that is all theory, right? Those are all concepts. So even though it's for architects, especially those are all concepts. Those are not really like a code part of it. So you will want to s store those content, save them as a reference material so that you can always go back and look at it. You may not all the time work on everything related to MuleSoft in one job or one one time so for example current my application that i'm developing may not require anything about um, vpcs right it is a all on-prem so i don't have to work anything with the vpc but tomorrow when i work switch my project or the job i might have to work with the vpc so all those concept wise i would suggest to hold on to all those materials at least i do and i do go back and keep re uh, revising those slides those content so i don't forget to amprasad's question so <laughs> i don't forget the things right yeah okay yeah. and there's like a um so th this one is application networks uh, yeah right so when you take the course They'll give you like slides or they'll give you like a training manual and you can print it out. I like paper. You can print it out and you can add. This is the one that they revamped. They revamped um, They revamped two of their architect courses. So this is the new one. And you could just you could just save it. I I don't see it changing anytime soon, but this is what I, I save. So this is a benefit of taking um, some of the training courses is that you can get that manual and you can have it as a reference or you can have a digital reference if you don't like paper. I have the digital one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anything like docs or information, etc., for integration or certification. As a part of, I think the same what Whitney was showing, if you enroll for the architect um, classes, you do get certificate um, slides or uh, the printed one. I took the remote one, not the uh, physical class. So I had all the um, online material for it. So you do get all the docs and information, et cetera, as a part of the training course, if you enroll for it, promote. Yeah, what do, you, what do you mean by, is this the one training MuleSoft? Uh, no, I think he was uh, trying to give you the link to uh, squeeze. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. I think if I look at it. Oh, I yeah. see. Yeah, Philip. Yeah. yeah, that's for the developer. Yes. Okay, yes. before we forget, Whitney, we still have to pick the third name from last question or uh, if, yeah. if there is no good answer we can change the question if okay so do you have a question in mind okay, you want to ask tricky because we usually go with the same questions in here right um that's on this part okay yes one second i will write one question on the chat 
only the question first guys read the question and then i'll write the four choices in there so tell me what is in there right since i have to type that now so give me 10 seconds uh, I'll make it easy for you guys. Uh, uh, and the last, um, what is that? Yeah, found it. And, uh... Sorry, <laughs> that was my okay. Okay, the question is this answer it after I say. just type the number option you don't have to write everything no that's not uh, okay this yes. went fast system process experience uh, experience <laughs> process system three 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 See, everybody's Mulesoft expert, guys. Come on. You guys are all like. <laughs> yeah. With the Okay. So the first one came before your your four choices. Yes. That's. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> <Didn't> you... <laughs> it's, it's so difficult. Okay. I'll stick to the. I. I... Go ahead. I would say you just give it to the first one. Um, Tyson. Yeah. I think I think no. I, I, it it won't be fair. I because I asked the question and I said wait until I put the all the choices. So let's stick to that. Okay. The first answer after so then that's chance, okay. uh, is gonna be Nageshwar, right? For the options. It, it won't be fair, guys, if okay. I don't say true to that one. And sorry for that last one. So I'll state with the Nageshwar. Uh, please send me your. Uh, that's. So he, it, it was not the choice. And you're. Your answer came before I put my choices, like almost at the same time, which means you didn't see the choices. That's another one. Uh, oh, w w one good thing. Um, maybe one last tip uh, I learned yesterday. Some of the answer, uh, some of s some questions, pay attention, close attention to the focus, especially if in the architect's exam, pay attention to the question. Sometimes what happens, we read half the questions and we assume something and we answer. There are so many questions which are in the other direction. It's like, what is not one of the layer in three, uh, three layer uh, API layer connectivity? I'm just give, throwing an example. There are questions which are tricky. You, they don't want you to answer the positive answer. They want you to choose the negative choice, which is a test to find out how uh, focused you are and how how much you are paying attention to the actual question. So please be careful when you read the questions. First, check it out whether it's a positive or the negative question in there. Right. Okay. Thanks, Nageshwar. Uh, what will be what will the next be about? yeah i mean now this is the we still have 12 minutes so probably this is the time let us know 
what what next topics you will want to hear and also if you have anything that you think you sh you want to share with the community like an a use case or a problem that you solved something that you did and you think um, it will be helpful for people to know feel free to reach out to Whitney or me uh, as a, uh, for a speaker nomination and we can help you through go through the um topic and also prepare uh, prepare the slides and all those so we'll be happy to get any speaker if you have anything um, interesting for community feel free to reach out to Whitney or me for that one do we have a meetup for preparation for integration architect exam it's <laughs> i don't think any meetup can cover really uh, the content of the exam it's too too big it's too wide and architect exam is more on the um, more on the understanding and, and the logical solutions of it so it, it's it's it will definitely be not be enough for like a 40 minute of <laughs> any presentation like if you really take the exam yeah, I think with me the uh, not exam the course is probably three or five days uh goes fall full yeah. day class so it, it's long it's a bit yeah. long so when I when I took the integration and architect exam, I had took a five day course called solution yeah. design, but I didn't I didn't take the exam right away. So they deprecated that exam and they created a whole nother exam, which had nothing to do with the old course I took. So I would say for the integration architect exam, it's really. If you're not taking the course then you're going to fall back on your on-the-job training like because they're going to ask you questions about just integration in general not um some of the some of it will be specific to mulesoft and some of it will be like different things like do you know what a jms is do you know this when do you use that stuff like that so when you're preparing for that exam you want to look at the mulesoft uh documentation but also just make sure you know um basic integration like when you know when do you use an api versus when do you use a queue versus you know just stuff like that um also if you have this this is going to help you like if you already took it that data sheet has the the modules and it breaks it up based off that data sheet and then you can go and look up like where um, it is the trainings are really designed to help you but i know not everyone wants to pay for the trainings so uh anything to do with vcore for api led connectivity okay yeah. well, i think that's a good topic uh so i'm guessing yeah. that's the suggestion for next events so yeah that's a good good one mm. yeah so yeah i think his was v core and capacity planning yes yeah. so i'll take a note of that one uh, let us know guys anything you want to um consider for the next events or even if you want to present anything i think that will be okay good. sonar q oh that's was that's one nice too Okay, that's good. Okay, we still have eight minutes. So it's an open house. Anybody has any questions, anything you can ask either on audio, speak up or just chat anything. Okay, any recommendations on resources for studying diagrams? Okay, so I would say start with um, the MuleSoft documentation. So for instance, uh, Cloud Hub Architecture, there's a lot of good diagrams that on the documentation for Cloud Hub Architecture. Uh, let me think of some other things. Um, yeah, start start there. Oh, okay, so performance tuning. Yeah. That's always an interesting one. <laughs> performance tuning is like, it never ends. Okay, so this one leverage palm file dependencies benefit of parent child palms. Yeah. 
uh yeah that's also a good one just since you mentioned just be careful of uh, when you put the parent child forms in there in some places m unit doesn't like that relationship so could cause some issues in your build pipelines when you have parent and uh, child forms for your meal apps uh, data weave best practices and patterns yes that is also a good one uh, and al also at the end of this one you will get an um, uh, email about giving us feedback you can also write all these things in that feedback it is a like i think 10 or 12 question questionnaire and you can answer all the questions there how you liked it what we did well and where we did not do well and where we can improve right so so both ways good and bad of anything why we create remote repo like nexus of jfrog if we have exchange repo we can have also have our application as a connector over exchange or exchange exchange I mean, exchange is built on um, on top of um, maven repository which is true but as a product its its purpose is different right uh, I, I think recently um, one of the mule ambassador jason is the one he he published one nice youtube video uh, on his channel comparing how you can use exchange as your maven repository you can take a look at that one too but generally as a product mulesoft exchange is for holding your connector your apis your applications and all that right so if you are creating a connector as an application you will push that on the onto the exchange instead of to the jfrog some build pipelines uh, do use do require maven maven check-in for their applications so it all depends how your build pipeline is set up whether it is purely against the exchange or it is it is uh through the to the typical nexus artifactory like a jfrog or anything else so it all depends on that one big iot and views of projects in the industry that is underway wow that's a very open-ended question are there any big iot and views of projects in the industry that is underway not that i am aware of but what i have seen is people have used MuleSoft um in different things like even i i run MuleSoft on the raspberry pi too right so the, you it just your your um your imagination you can run anywhere um, you want um Shra shravan just i think last month he published a very nice article on how to run uh, MuleSoft in raspberry pi how to turn on lights using those it's an example but that does open doors for you to go and explore more around it right like in my home i have raspberry pi so if you the Alexas are connected through it. The APIs are exposed via Raspberry Pi running in the MuleSoft. So there are a lot of stuff that you can really do with it. A uh, topic for performance tuning could be high level guidelines to detect improvement points. Yes, that is, uh, I mean, that's true. So performance tuning, if someone has really an experience with it, have done it, would like to share, uh to the community it will be an interesting topic too right for everyone anything there's one on your the virtual muleys page too right mm -hmm. that you guys did before yeah that, that's right that's a good reminder so th there is one video on the virtual muley channel if you go and it is about performance tuning your uh, mulesoft applications debugging it is actually given by one of the support person in MuleSoft who does it day to day uh, in his day to day work for customers right so it is definitely helpful it's it goes in very details of tips and tricks so i would suggest you can take a look at the uh, virtual muley channel and look for that that one so yes that's a good reminder there anything which MuleSoft is planning for serverless or fast that's probably a product question and uh, if something is happening internal probably i wouldn't know that 
so so <laughs> yeah i mean that's that's different stuff right uh what else so i hope i think we have two minutes left so we can conclude this thank you very much thank you guys for coming go ahead <laughs> no, i was just saying the uh, same thing thank yeah. you no, thanks everyone <laughs> thank you for, uh, and thank you with me Thank you, Mike. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. This is our first event, so it went well. So thank you very much. <laughs> we hope to have yes. many more after this. Thanks, everyone. Stay safe. Thank stay you. healthy. Okay, and I, I have. Thank you, Mani. Thank you so no. much. <laughs> I could not have done this no, without you. Fine. Was yeah, it okay? It, it was awesome. I think it it was all good. So this was the first one uh, for us. So it was a good start, really. So we'll continue with it, and we'll find some more topics, and we'll we'll hopefully we'll soon have the another next event with some more. Uh, topics around um, whatever people suggested here, right? So let's go through yes. it, and I do hope um, to see some more feedbacks. Uh, into uh, give me one second.